Hi everyone, today in this video we have Oliver from UK, he's one of the most successful freelancers on Upwork and we have the pleasure to have a short interview with him and ask him a few questions. Hi dear Oliver. Hello, how are we man? All good, all good, it's a pleasure to meet you. Honestly, it's a pleasure to be here. I love what you're doing in the space. Perfect. Keep it up. Man. Thank you so much, thank you so much. So dear Oliver, for people who are watching you for the first time, can you give a brief uh, presentation of yourself? Yeah, of course. Um, my background is, is actually in architecture, strangely enough. So I spent about eight years studying architecture, you know, thought that was the be all and end all. Got my master's and just, you know, realized it wasn't for me. So I've been freelancing now for three, four years um, and would not swap it for the world. So I'm a designer, designer by trade. Um, I do a lot of branding work, a lot of social work. And uh, yeah, that's what I do. Amazing, amazing. So dear Oliver, what motivates you to explore the opportunities of freelancing on a platform like Upwork instead of traditional employment? Good question. I think mainly it started in university. So I never wanted to go into, you know, working for a shop or go back to waitering. So I started doing a few bits for families and friends, you know, seeing how I could help out. And then I started on Fiverr originally. So I was doing, you know, right. five pound logos, five pound websites, just trying to get the beer money in. Um, and then it just it just kind of snowballed from there, you know. Started learning a lot of things on Fiverr, transitioned to Upwork. work. And then there was one day where I was sat in my nine to five doing architecture and I was earning more on Upwork work than I was in my job. So that was when, you know, I knew I needed to switch things up and made the change. Perfect, perfect. Now. Uh, you have achieved a great success on Upwork, you're a top rated freelancer plus on Upwork uh, the 3%, the 0-3% of freelancer on Upwork and you've earned plus 180k uh, on the platform. So how did you manage to achieve such, such an exceptional milestone of success on Upwork? I think, you know, there's a lot of people that are in it for the race to the bottom but there's, a, there's also a lot of people that kind of understand a lot more to get to the top and I'm a sucker for psychology and data. So a lot of what I do is all about kind of the nuances of, of different things to kind of slowly push yourself up to that level and how to position yourself, you know, in front of a client. So I think those are the things that, you know, set you apart so it's not always a race to the bottom. When it comes to freelancing, a lot of freelancers actually struggle. How do you maintain a consistent stream of uh, clients and projects on Upwork? I found this tough at the very start because, you know, I, I was always doing logos and websites, right? So they're always a one time gig. So whenever you get someone in, you know, you do the work, you send it off and they're never going to need a second logo or a second website, right? So you're always chasing the next thing. So I started transitioning to monthly retainers. So design work on a monthly basis, right? So let's say you're a copywriter. I think it's best to do something which is in demand every month, like a blog or like an email or something like that because that way you know instead of kind of finding the next client all the time you build a basis of your client base you Absolutely. know what you're going to get each month and then every single client on top of that slowly builds up you know what you're going to do each month and uh, it's just a, a lot easier of a safety net uh i i i'm sure that upwork hasn't been up always the the best platform for you so what challenges have you faced during your freelancing career and how did you overcome them to continue growing your business, your freelance business? Oh, a lot of challenges, right? I guess it's completely different to a nine to five. So, you know, normal nine to five, you'd come in, um, you know, you'd maybe do your bit and you'd clock out, right? But with freelancing, you are effectively on the clock all the time. And I'm sure you've experienced this as well, but you know, not only do you provide your service, you're also the sales guy. You know, you've got to wear your marketing hat, you've got to wear your accounting hat. And I'm rubbish with numbers, so you know, I've slowly start. I've slowly started to bring in people now to kind of help me in those areas. But I think you know, if you're a keen learner and you kind of want to yeah. really make a mission of it, then you know, it's worth just slowly, you know, learning little bits on everything you can. I have a tricky question for you. So, uh, if you look back, what advice would you give to your past self when you was starting as a freelancer? I think niche down is, is oh, a lot right. of people say it, right? But I think really niche down on exactly who your customer is, right? Because as soon as you start to understand who the customer is, you can tailor Fantastic. everything better to suit that, right? I think 
you know, early stages, I never had a mentor or a guide or anything. So that was one of the main reasons why I started putting things on social media is to right. be that person that I wish I had, you know, when I was younger. So niche down, start small and, you know, slowly build the snowball. Absolutely fantastic. Now, uh, may I ask what are your future goals as a freelancer? So what are your uh, goals? Where do you see yourself in one year or five years uh, overall with your freelancing career? Good question. I don't post about that much actually. I think, you know, I'm really exploring remote working, trying to travel abroad, trying, you know, do things on my own. And I think it can be a very lonely world, right? We sit in these same Absolutely. four walls all the time and that's why things like Twitter, Instagram are great to find people of a similar narrative. But I'd like to build more of a community, right? Where right. people can come on there, they can learn about freelancing, they can get their questions answered. Um, but it's also a place like, you know, let's say you're traveling to Lisbon next month, you can message someone in the chat and, you know, all these other people have been to Lisbon and you can find the best cafes, you can meet up, all this kind of thing. I think network is everything in this. Absolutely, fantastic. It's really great to hear everything that you're saying. Now, Oliver has also started a content creation on a platform like Instagram. Uh, I will definitely link uh, the, the link to, to his channel and also to his Instagram account on the description below. Uh, dear Oliver, how has been experiencing uh, the content creation on a platform like uh, Instagram? Has it had any impact on your uh, freelancing career, negative or positive? Yeah, love it. I think you just realise that everyone is in the same boat. You know, we all get the same strange clients, we all get the same strange requests. Um, and it's about, you know, if we get 10 people on one problem, we learn a lot more than, you know, just one on one all the time. So I think Absolutely. it's great. It's brilliant. Perfect, perfect. Now, dear Oliver, I really appreciate your time for sharing your thoughts, your experience and your freelancing journey with us. Uh, I'm also definitely sure that a lot of uh, people who are aiming to become a freelancer and break the traditional 9 to 5 rules uh, will get a lot of inspiration, a lot of thoughts, a lot of ideas from our conversation on this video. So I really appreciate your time. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Thank you for sharing your experience and hope to see you another time and another video to, to talk about another specific topic together. More than happy to. Thanks for inviting me. Perfect. Keep in touch. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Take care.